rather than doing a top five tips video, I am going to do the top five most commonly asked questions across my social media. Now, number one, there is so many people ask, is fishing my full-time job? I never ever expected to be able to say that it is my full-time job, but indeed it is. You can normally find myself and Herbs on the bank somewhere across the UK between a Monday and a Thursday morning. Question number two, how do you know how much bait to take with you on a session? Now, this is a question that is very, very hard to answer because each individual session, as all of you guys will well know, can pan out in many different ways. What I like to do is take 10 kilos of freshly frozen particles with me, keeping one five kilo bag frozen until the morning of my session, getting one five kilo bag out of the freezer prior to the session and defrosting it ready to rock and roll. But what I also do, because 10 kilos of bait, although it sounds a lot, you can go through it very, very quickly, is have at any one time up to eight jars of the impact particle range in the back of the van, because if it's kicking off, and the fish want more bait, there is nothing worse than being on the bank and not having any more bait to put out. Question number three is, how much bait do you put out at the start of the trip? Now, whenever I'm doing anything filming related, so I'm filming a session, whether that be with Fox, Sticky Baits, Monster or Carp Fix, the amount of bait that I'm putting in is relevant to the session that I'm filming at the time. But as a generalization across all of my fishing, I'll never start with any more than 10 or 12 spawns. Now, two reasons for this. The lakes that I'm going to are very, very busy. So you don't know how much bait the previous angler has put in before you. And secondly, if the fish move and you've ended up humping loads of bait into one particular swim, you're more inclined to think, you know what? I'm just gonna sit here. I'm not gonna move because I've put a lot of bait out. If you've only put 10 or 12 spawns out, there isn't really enough bait there for you to commit to staying. There is enough bait there for you to get a bite if the fish are there, but if you do want to move, you haven't wasted loads of money on bait in a swim that you don't want to be fishing. So question number four, how do you know how far to clip your rods in conjunction with your baiting rod? Now, this is a question that much like the question before is very, very hard to answer. And it depends entirely on the situation that you're faced with in the session when you're turning up. Now. I have already done a video on this on the Monster Particles YouTube where I covered it in quite de quite a lot of detail and that was fishing into a strong crosswind. Now, like I say, there is a lot of things that decipher how your rig is landing in conjunction with how your bait's landing. You've got to take into consideration things like the weather conditions, the crosswind, the headwind, the tailwind. If you're spotting with braid or you're spotting with mono, the mono that you're using on your fishing reels, the size of the leads, whether you're using PVA bags. There is so many different things, like I say, to take into consideration. But for me, the one sort of thing that I say to people as a general rule is, is regardless of the depth of water that you're fishing, if I'm fishing anywhere sort of 15 feet or shallower, everything will be clipped up the same. Anywhere over that, it's sort of a bit of a guesstimation really. There isn't really a rule so to speak like people believe in terms of swing back but the biggest biggest key thing that i would say to do is always stand in the same position whenever you're casting if you stand in the same position you hit the clip in the same position in theory everything should be landing as accurately as it possibly should be question number five and again this is a question that i get asked so much why do you use long rigs now it's fashionable to use short rigs, dead straight rigs that have been steamed over the kettle so they kick away from the lead every time. For me and for the style of fishing that I do, I have sort of come to the conclusion now that using longer rigs has probably got me a lot more bites. Now, I'm not one of these anglers that sort of looks too far into things, but using long rigs, I am almost convinced is getting me a lot more bites than what it was when I was using short rigs. Now, a lot of my fishing is particle based small bait fishing whether i'm using naturals in my mix i'm always using very very small items of particle now if i'm using a short rig the fish are feeding over particle the particles going down it's spreading over a larger area and with the particles they're not feeding as hard as what they would be is if they were feeding on larger items of bait so i've got always a critically balanced hook bait on a very very long rig and as well 
I don't like my rig to sit dead straight off the lead. Now, the reason for this is, is I think that when a fish picks the bait up, much like when you're fishing with a solid PVA bag, if you have any sort of curve in the rig, the rig can go a lot further back in the carp's mouth before it feels the weight of the lead. And obviously, the further the rig is back in the fish's mouth, the further it's got to come back out when the fish feels the weight of the lead and spits out. And if the rig is right back in the fish's mouth, the chances are that the minute it feels the weight of the lead, it is going to be absolutely nailed. So they are the five most common questions that I get asked across my social media.